Hi folks and welcome to a series of screencasts on muscle tissue. You might recall that uh, in our unit on histology that we looked at three different types of muscle tissue. We'll do that again here but we'll primarily focus on skeletal tissue. We, mo we know the most about it and uh, as far as your introduction to muscle, uh, skeletal muscle is going to do it for us. We'll first start off with the topic of this video being the anatomy of muscle tissue and we'll tackle that both at the gross level, that is at the macro level, and then we'll, we'll quickly move down to the cellular level and even the microscopic or, excuse me, or even the molecular level of um, muscle anatomy. So we'll start with the basic muscle functions. Muscle tissue is primarily involved with movement. That's its principal function and we'll talk about how how that occurs. Every single muscle fiber or muscle cell can move and therefore the entire muscle can move. It also helps maintain posture which isn't movement but in order to maintain posture or to keep things still a force is necessary and that's where muscles come in. They also help to stabilize and support joints while we move sometimes we need to keep joints still and lastly, in thermal regulation, your muscles are your primary organ that produces the heat of your body uh, and keeps it at a nice and steady 37 degrees Celsius. Some physical characteristics of muscle tissue are that it has contractility. That means it can shorten and thicken and that it's able to be stimulated. That is, if it's given a stimulus, it will react. And that we call excitability. It also has extensibility, which is the ability to stretch, and elasticity, which means that after it's stretched, it will regain its original shape. So it's sort of rubbery in that aspect. Now, you do remember the different muscle types, and that's important here for us to remember. First is skeletal muscle. Some of the characteristics of skeletal muscle are that it's striated and it's voluntary, meaning that you have conscious control over it. Cardiac muscle is found only in the heart. It is also striated, but it's involuntary, meaning that you don't have conscious control over it. And that has a, a little bit um, different morphological structure. And finally, smooth muscle, found in digestive organs. It's non-striated, hence its name, and it's also involuntary. Here's some muscle terminology that you should become familiar with. And you might have a sheet of paper ready so that you can write down some of the definitions of each of these as they do appear on your eye can sheet. First of all, the term myofiber. A myofiber is a, is a skeletal, cardiac, or smooth muscle cell. The term myofiber, muscle cell, and muscle fiber I'll be using interchangeably. And I don't mean to, to confuse you, but, uh, but all of those terms mean the same thing. Now if we dissect the word myofiber, that prefix myo is actually Latin for muscle. So whenever in anatomy or biology or in medicine when you see the word myo, it's referring to muscle tissue. Principal types of myofilaments inside of a muscle fiber. First are the thin filaments known as actin and then there are the thick filaments known as myosin. These two types of filaments actually interact to allow the muscle to move, and we'll learn a little bit more about that when we do uh, muscle physiology. But these are long filamentous, that is, they're thread-like proteins within, that run along the, the long axis of a muscle fiber. The term sarcolemma refers to the cell or plasma membrane of a muscle cell, and the sarcoplasm is the cytoplasm. Again, not to confuse you, but these are different terms that are very specific to muscle cells. Now let's look at the gross anatomy of muscle tissue. And we're going to start off with the connective tissue. Now a muscle is more of an organ than it is just a tissue. So we're looking at the gross anatomy of a particular muscle. And we'll start off with the connective tissue. The primary connective tissue in muscle is collagen fibers. So collagen fibers, you recall, do not stretch very much and they're very, very tough. So they give some support and toughness to the muscle itself. The connective tissue starts with the tendon and then 
these tendon fibers don't end right here where the muscle starts. The fibers actually branch out. Some of them cover the entire muscle to create a, a connective tissue covering on the muscle known as the epimecium. So the epimecium is collagen fibers that wrap the entire muscle and support it that way. Within the muscle itself are compartments of muscle, muscle fibers. Okay, so these are bundles of muscle fibers called fascicles. Okay, and surrounding them is that same connective tissue, but because it's within the muscle itself, it's called the perimecium. And then every single muscle fiber, this is a muscle fiber sticking out here, has its own connective tissue covering made up of the collagen material as well, and that's known as the endomecium. Collectively, all of this connective tissue is called fascia. And if you were to dissect this muscle out, you'd see that there's an awful lot of what we call superficial fascia on the surface that includes not only collagen, but some fat tissue as well. The fat tissue is there for padding. So in review, you've got a diagram in your packet where you can start labeling uh, this gross muscle anatomy and the connective tissue. We start off with the tendon. The tendon branches off into the epimecium outer covering. And the endomecium, if we jump to that, is the connective tissue surrounding individual muscle fibers. Each, indiv each individual muscle fiber is wrapped with, the, with, a, with a connective tissue endomecium. And then bundles of those muscle fibers are surrounded by a, a, a wrapping called the perimecium. Now let's look at an individual muscle cell or a myofiber itself. They're elongated and cylindrical, but they're also tapered at the ends. This picture here is not a very good representation. It's actually a muscle cell that has been cut at each end. But if it were an entire skeletal muscle cell, it would be tapered, tapered off at the ends. Uh, their diameter is the average diameter of a typical cell in the body, anywhere from 10 to 100 micrometers. Um, the stronger the muscle fiber, the thicker it is. Uh, that means it just has more of the actin and myosin filaments on the inside. The length of the muscle fiber varies. It's the, the muscle fiber itself runs the entire length of the muscle. So for example, in your quadriceps, your upper thigh muscles on, this, on the anterior surface are some of the longest uh, muscle fibers. And these muscle fibers run from tendon to tendon within the muscle. So they're quite long, but again, they're very, very thin and thread-like. When muscle cells form during embryonic and fetal development and even in younger ages, immature muscle cells actually fuse together to form a skeletal muscle. And this is why there, you see so many nuclei within one muscle cell. Those nuclei come from the immature cells fusing together. And the nucleus actually stays in, intact within the adult muscle tissue fiber, but actually the the nucleus doesn't have much of a function after that because the cell does not go through mitosis after it's in, it's in its adult form. And of course the striations, the alternating light and dark banding pattern on the muscle fiber is actually due to the overlap of actin and myosin down at the molecular level, which you'll see in a moment. So if we were to take a, a muscle fiber, a myofiber, and dissect it even more closely, we'll see here we're peeling back the sarcolemma, and then we have bundles of myofilaments in the inside of the muscle fiber. So this is like a cable, and where these might look like the um, like threads inside, they're actually made up of smaller filaments. The actin and myosin filaments are within these structures here called myofibrils. For the banding pattern, we talk about the, the dark band being the A band and the light band being the I band. And there's no rhyme or reason as to why they call it the A and the I band. I think somebody just made it up at some point and it stuck. So dark is the A band and light is the I band. Now if we do a Time Life magazine blow up of this section of a myofibril, this bundle of myofilaments actin and myosin, we actually get to see the actin and myosin. Here in this model here, the thin filaments, the actin they have in blue, and the myosin, the thicker ones, they have in red. An entire unit of muscle goes from this structure here, which is a protein that holds the actin molecules in place, and that's called the Z-disc. 
From Z disk to Z disk is called a sarcomere. When then a sarcomere or a sarcomere is a complete contractile unit of a myofiber. Here we have the I band, which is the light area. It's where the actin filaments are not overlapping, overlapping with the myosin filaments. And then the darker I band is where the thick myosin filaments overlap with the thin actin filaments. There is a lighter area in between called the H zone, but we're not going to be too concerned with that or the M line. It's just a different protein that helps in the structure of the, um, of the myofiber itself. So here we're at the molecular level. Now we can look at this even more closely here at the uh, individual sarcomere from Z-lined or Z-disc to Z-disc. So we have a sarcomere. Here it is. The M-line in the middle, again, not something that you have to memorize, but you should know that a sarcomere runs from Z-disc to Z-disc, sometimes called the Z-lines. Here is the thick myosin filaments and then the thin actin filaments in between and there are other proteins that hold it together. If you were to label this portion here is the I band again and then in between where the myosin filaments are overlapping with the actin is the A band. In lab class we'll take some time to look at this and examine it more closely. So that's it for your introduction to the anatomy both gross and microscopic uh, muscle tissue particularly skeletal muscle. I hope that was helpful. We'll be doing some more investigation in class. If you have any questions, write them down and bring them to class. Pump and we'll up see the you jam, then. pump Thanks. it up while your feet are stumping. And the jam is pumping. Look ahead, the crowd is jumping. Pump it up a little more. Get the party going on the dance floor. See, cause that's where the party's at. And you find out if you do that.